Hello again, everybody. This is James Bartley, and you're watching and listening to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Today, I have Judith Quoba back from the Night Flight podcast. She's got a lot to share with us. A lot has happened since the recording and release of the last time we spoke on this show. And here we are on the eve of the election in America. Probably hasn't been an imp- as an important as important an election in America since 1864 when President Abraham Lincoln was reelected. So a lot is going on. So without any further ado, Judith Quoba, welcome back to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Thanks, James. And very good to be back here. A lot of stuff is going on and uh, it's getting crazier by the day. It is. I mean, we were just chatting before the show and I figured, well, we might as well start recording because... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> We're just saying interesting things to each other. But, well, tell me what's been going on with you in the recent past. You mean in Germany? Yes. Like what's been going on with you personally and extending outwards to Germany and, and the rest um, of the world? Yeah, I, I talked on other shows um, uh, about this. Um, I had a brain surgery in December last year and I have a leftover. <laughs> So meaning that um, I'm more or less always dizzy. And um, sometimes when I walk, the, it feels as if the sound, uh, the sound, the, the ground <laughs> is not solid. Mm. And um, sometimes I have the impression I'm sliding out of my body. So that was not another tumor, but that was just a leftover of the surgery. So that, that is going on with me personally. Um, I have adjusted to it more or less. And um, other than that, I'm okay. I'm, I'm really doing fine. Um, and um, no, I'm officially retired. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Post. <laughs> Cheers, big ears. <laughs> Yeah, well, and then here in Germany, very interesting things happening. Um, So, you know, we have all these Corona measures in lockstep all around uh, the world. And of course, there is some resistance rising to that. And we had in, in August, it was 1st of August, we had a very huge protest in Berlin. 1.3 million people showed up, which not even the, um, the ones that uh, did the demonstration and organized it, they, they didn't expect that. They thought maybe 20, 30,000. Uh, funny enough, the mainstream media reported that 17,000 uh, showed up. <laughs> And of course, they are all um, Nazis and right-wingers and um, yeah. So then the system was, I guess, a little bit shocked about the numbers that showed up. And um, so they used the police to dissolve the demonstration. The reason being that there is not enough distance between each individual. But because they did that, um, it got a lot of traction. And the next one, that was 28th of August, had already 2 million people in the streets. So there they interrupted the march. Um, The march was supposed to start at Randenburg Gate and then going to Siegesäule, victory column. And the police bottled them up and didn't uh, let them go, which of course led to that scenario that more and more people were coming and then there was no social distancing. (laughs) And then (laughs) uh, they had a a reason to dissolve in that area the protest as well. And, but if you are Antifa or you are protesting um, 
with Black Lives Matter, none of this really matters. The police will not um, hinder you in any way. They don't care if you're wearing masks. They don't care about social distancing. And I have to say, really, do you really think people do not notice that? Yeah. Yeah, and out of it came a lot of good things that are very well organized. We have Doctors for Enlightenment. Um, we have Lawyers for Enlightenment. A subsection of that is a Klagepaten. Um, that is where they do videos to explain to you what you can do yourself without needing a lawyer. And um, I looked it up on um, Lawyers for Enlightenment. And uh, interestingly enough, even here in my little town, there are a couple of uh, lawyers who will help you with um, corona issues if you get a fine or whatever. Then we have Parents Rising. We recently had a six-year-old dropping dead in the school. And of course, the narrative was it has nothing to do with the mask wearing. Yeah, sure, because it's perfectly normal that six-year-olds, they just drop dead for no good reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and um, so another thing is... Um, Mutigmacher. Mutigmacher, you could loosely translate that into encourager. And that is an organization, let's say, you are in police, military, or in any other capacity where you have to enforce these rules, like teachers. And you no longer can handle that and you do want to quit your job. But the question is, in this economic situation, now what? Um, so they, they will pick you up, support you financially. Um, they also have um, therapists working with you. And um, they will help you to find a new job. So you can also do that, but not many are using it as of now. We have, we have some policemen that spoke at de uh, demonstrations. Actually, there is um, a demonstration every weekend here in Germany, in um, different cities. And the next big one will be in Leipzig, uh, 7th of November. But, okay, the idea behind it is that the big one in Leipzig was the end of the old DD, DDR, German Democratic Republic, East Germany. I get it <laughs> that people want to latch on to that. At the same time, I have to say, I am pretty sure that if there weren't geopolitical reasons to abolish the German Democratic Republic in the wake of dismantling the Soviet Union and their, their influences and so on and so forth, that would have never happened. You know what I mean? What do you think? Well, was it just the peaceful protests or w were there geopolitical reasons? You mean as far as the collapse of the Soviet Union? Yes, and yes, yes, In order for them, and of course, with the benefit of hindsight, we can say this mm -hmm. or I can say this, but in order to affect their long cherished goal of a world government, the seamless merging between uh, Russia and the West, which has been talked about in congressional inquiries, uh, 
Norman Dodd was an archivist and staffer with the Reese Commission in, in the 1950s, I think. Uh, I have to look back. It could be the 50s, 60s, 70s. I can't remember exactly when. But there are documentaries and interviews with this gentleman. He's probably passed away by now. And his job was to go through the internal records of the Ford Foundation, one of these tax-exempt foundations, which was using their grant-making power to give all this money to all these different organizations, create all these organizations that had a decidedly socialist leaning. And he hired a, a woman who was a skeptic about the whole concept of a world government, of a world communist uh, takeover. And she came away stunned going through the, the actual minutes from all the, the meetings of, of the Ford Foundation uh, board members. And the gist of it was that the intention was to, one of the major intentions was to create a merger at some point between Russia and the United States. And, and the only way that could happen is if you get rid of the old Soviet Union because they'd outlived their usefulness. You yes. had that East-West schism, and that was the excuse that both the communists and uh, the Western corporatists used to just wreak havoc in the third world, enslave and kill all these people in lands coveted by whether it's the transnational corporations or by the communists. The end result for the peasants, the end result for the, uh, the people was always the same, slaughter, starvation, detention. So by getting rid of the Soviet Union, letting it die a natural death, look what happened. NATO expanded all the way <laughs> to the <laughs> borders of, of mm. Russia. And now we have this much disputed issue with the Ukraine. And, you know, all the talk about, well, there are neo-Nazis or, or people with decidedly fascist ideologies running the Ukraine. Uh, what has the Bidens been up to in the Ukraine and using Ukraine as a means to destabilize and create more conflict with Russia? They tried that with, you know, South Ossetia. They tried it with all these different places to create more conflict with Russia. Uh, Judith, that there are no more communists in Europe. They're just social democrats now. Right. So that's what happened, apparently, that you had all these different parliaments in Europe that were stuffed to the gills with all these socialists. And then they create the, you know, the EU expands along with NATO, absorbing all these former East Bloc countries. And very quickly, we saw with, with the Clinton administration, Bill Clinton, he created a program, uh, Bridges to America and Partnership for Peace. And overnight dozens of, of former communist countries suddenly had military alliances with NATO and by extension the U.S. Suddenly all these former, former East Bloc uh, militaries were training in the United States with American mm -hmm. National Guard units, Maryland, all these different states. So for 20 years now, all these communist soldiers, formerly communist soldiers, I don't know if their ideology has ever really gone away. If you listen to the, some of the things that people are telling me about what's going on in Slovenia and other places, just the totalitarian mindset is still there. So uh, to answer your question, uh, I think that in order to affect this world government, the whole East-West Cold War thing had to go away in order to further cement these uh, these ties that bind, so to speak. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I get it that people would like to think uh, we did it, um, but I'm pretty sure if that had not been the time where they wanted to dismantle all of this, that the so-called German Democratic Republic would still be in place today, protests or not. So that, that is my take on that. That is not to say, you know what, all stay home, don't say anything. Um, 
No, you, there has to be a unified pushback. If, if that does not happen, you will end up in a technocratic gulag. And uh, another interesting thing, do you know who Christian Drosten is? What's the, what's the surname again? Drosten, Christian Drosten. No, no, please tell me about him. Um, he is uh, heading the um, Robert Koch Institute, RKI, and They call him Professor Dr. Drosten. The problem is his, P his dissertation for his PhD cannot be found. And he was the one who downloaded via social media sequences of this so-called virus and then aligned it and then did this PCR test that was sold around the world. And on that PCR test, they are basing their cases on. And now imagine, and he is also working with a, um, a company, um, Mbiol, M Imibiol, Mbiol, it slipped my mind. Anyway, uh, this guy who is owning this company, um, he is doing the test kits. They have known each other for 17 years. So, in other words, one declares the pandemic, the other one is doing the test kits. All right? And now imagine because there are people here working very, very hard on that issue. And now imagine <laughs> the guy who declared the pandemic and convinced the who to do that does not even have a PhD. I mean, if that surfaces, then it's... Um, and the impacts for Drosten are coming hard and fast. So... There will be a class action lawsuit. It will take place in the US. Um, they are, they, it, it started here uh, in Germany, but they are working with um, several law firms uh, in the United States because here in Europe, you cannot have a class action lawsuit, but you can do it in the United States because these test kits were sold also to the United States. And that is why you can do that. So anybody who has lost their business, their livelihood, they can um, latch onto that. That is still in the making. And um, I always uh, watch it on it's called Oval Media. It is in German. Um, but if anybody speaks German, they are doing a collection of information on Rosten, on all the players who are involved in it, so that they really have a solid case to present once that class action lawsuit goes live so to say. And Christian Drosten is one of the uh, guys who will be sued. Yeah. And several players in the WHO, several politicians and so on and so forth. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And the fact that the WHO had stated unequivocally on their own website and in, in, in their own papers that <coughs> one, A, COVID, coronavirus, whatever anyone wants to call it, is no more deadly than the normal seasonal flu. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they have not been able to isolate the virus. In other words, they haven't been able to actually quantifiably yeah. measure it. Yeah. So for all intents and purposes, it really doesn't exist. And then all the stories we've been hearing, which I, I believe implicitly, 
of people taking these tests and then like swabbing their dog's mouth or or you know swabbing <laughs> the ground and then or just sending it back without even using it yeah. and they're all coming back positive yeah and of course who... sorry oh please do you know who carrie mullis is <clears throat> no i don't okay Kerry Mullis is the original inventor of the PCR test. He got a Nobel Prize for chemistry. And I have a, on my channel, I have a short clip where he talks about it. The, the entire thing was about HIV. He was one of uh, the early ones coming out saying HIV causes AIDS that does not hold water. And here are the reasons why. So, and at the very end of that discussion, he says it very blatantly. A PCR test is not designed to tell you if you are sick, if you are, if you are um, infected, and it will not tell you if that so-called thing that you are having will cause you any problem in the future. That is not what a PCR test can do. Unfortunately, he died shortly before this entire corona madness hit. Because I'm pretty sure he would be up in arms what they are doing with his uh, invention. Now, what remains to be seen is the outcome of this election and and what happens is is it just going to be stalled out and they're going to say um well there is cheating and there is ballot stuffing and this and that we're going to need a recount like in back in 2000 when when the the bush neocons stole that election right because they needed a, they needed a, another war in the middle east so they had they just switched over to the republican neocon team back then hmm. so whether Trump wins or not, and I, I, for one, hope he does. I think that the pathological left, the Bolsheviks, are going to be turned loose. Uh, I mean, what you told me about the National Guard being rolled out, that's not yeah. really reassuring to me if if the governors of those states happen to be communists, right? So l let's see I don't have a dog out. in this race. <laughs> I, I understand. I, I understand entirely. And um, whether it's Trump or it's the demented Biden, um, the plan, the overlay will roll out. It will continue. Yeah. And Trump and the entire QAnon movement, to me, is the ultimate pacifier. Yeah, when I heard it for so many years. Yeah, you, you there in Europe, you don't have your guns anymore. <laughs> we still have our guns. Yeah, so fine. Now what? Guess what? The biggest resistance, the biggest unified pushback is here in Europe, in countries where the population is disarmed. What are you guys doing? Shooting each other in the streets? Yeah, being apathetic, waiting for the white knights to ride in and save you at the 11th hour. Seriously, that is, and I find it very irritating that a couple of truth seekers, people that I have respected for many years have jumped on that Q train. I find that so disappointing. And um, yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at, at this point, I mean, if, if if good can come out of anything, right, then right. okay, I'm not going to complain about it that much, right? <laughs> but there is a pacification aspect to it. Yeah. Uh, this kind of sit back and let things develop. Uh, everything is going according to plan. That's just smacks to me of, of too much uh, 
like savior programming and pacification at work mm -hmm. when there should be. And then there's the counter argument to that. Well, if you prep too much, if you go out and you learn how to can, you know, dried fruit and, and you learn how to make preservatives and you learn how to distill water, you're being fearful and fear-based and you're bringing about the very reality. That's nonsense. I mean, if the Mongols or the Huns were coming, I'm not going to sit here in the lotus position, go ohm and hope they go away. This is the <laughs> Mongols or the Huns we're talking about, right? You know, um, vibrations and the like and spirituality doesn't matter to them. And, and we're seeing a latter-day version of that with these Bolsheviks, these crazed Bolsheviks. And look what they've done. Everything is so contradictory. It, it's such huge gaslighting, too, uh, Judith. Like, for example, in California, probably the biggest commie state there is, they've turned loose another horde of prisoners mm. saying that, oh, you know, I, I guess they didn't have social distancing in the prison cells. So they let him out. Many of these are known murderers and child rapists and, and everything else, but no, just let him out. Mm. Some of them are going to wind up in the ranks of Antifa, guaranteed. And then a lot of people, they don't, they either never hear about that because they only get their information from the brainwashing media. Or if they hear about it at all, they just kind of shrug and, right? So, like, Keep every keep everyone locked up in their houses. Make sure everyone wears a mask. Let the Antifa rioters riot, but and, and let all these prisoners out, these hardened criminals, murderers, let them out. You know, to fight mm. COVID. It, it's like gaslighting, and it's like laughing in the face of people who know better. And that's the level of insanity we're at now, Judith. And we're not even at the election yet, right? Yeah, and. Many are saying no matter who wins, there will be unrest. Yeah, we will see. And uh, maybe we will not even have um, an outcome at the end of the evening. Maybe that is further down the line. Maybe around the middle of November. Yeah. Well, they could stall it out indefinitely. Oh, sure. <laughs> I mean, the, the media yeah. could spin it around, say Biden won in a landslide, and then Trump will be saying, oh, the election was rigged, fake news, I'm not going to leave office, right? So, you know, everything is flip-flopped into a different in, into that kind of dynamic. Yeah. And, of course, the left will go crazy, the media will go crazy. I mean, for all we know, this whole thing could be all, all be scripted. Yeah. That's how crazy this, this reality is. But, uh, and they, they compel people. For those who don't want chaos, carnage, bloodshed, and totalitarian rule, whatever misgivings someone may have about Trump, I mean, we're almost compelled to, to vote for him because the alternative is these crazed leftists burning down the houses and, and raping people and like the Soviet Red Army going through uh, – Eastern Europe in, in 1944 and 1945. So that, that's what they want to bring about. Now, to be sure, a lot of that rioting and whatnot has happened in mostly democratic places because they're socialist, communist hellholes anyway. So what, what's the difference? Just more chaos and more. But the ones who are taking it on the chin are the business owners, the people who own the shops, the people who own the restaurants on, on top of COVID wiping out their businesses. This is all like collectivization again, Judith, leading up to whatever is going to happen after the election. Just the destruction of businesses, the, the taking away of a personal sovereignty and, and liberty, the literal burning down of entire blocks of, of, of cities. This is like... You, the Ukraine in the 1930s, right? It just we're lead, heading towards like mass starvation or something. It's it's bizarre, and and it can only happen with the the brainwashing of successive generations of people. Mm. Otherwise, they would have learned from history. Yeah.
Yeah, it's just, but I'm gratified to hear that the Europeans are pushing back. I'm glad to hear that, especially, I've always had a soft spot for the Germans, <laughs> Judith, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, I like to think that the spirit of Herman, when the Romans call him Arminius, of course, is, is, is really enjoying himself right now because, you know, that doctor's movement you talked about, the lawyer's mm -hmm. movement, all the people protesting, and these are people that have been disarmed because that's what happens in these these super state uh, configurations. The first thing they do is take away the arms of people, right? And that, that fortunately, the Americans still have that option. But, yeah, but they, what are they doing? Do you see a unified pushback? No. What, what I see is the, the whole thing about all these feel-good stories, that all these mm -hmm. things are supposedly happening under our noses. All these children are being rescued and everything. And, you know, we all you know want children how, how to be I rescued. But... This, this war, first and foremost, takes place here and here. Oh, yes. Okay? And it needs to be won there. Yes, arms could be helpful supportive but having arms alone doesn't mean anything as we are seeing right now i mean where are they the biggest so-called democracies are mum or they have piss poor turnout when it comes to pushing back australia new zealand uk usa where are you You know what I mean? Yeah, Australia and is is particularly neutered. Uh, unfortunately, it's a small population. Uh, the Martin. Yeah, Bryant. but this this guy in Victoria, oh. Daniel, and oh my goodness, what he is doing that is so psychotic. And he can stand there day after day after day in these press mm -hmm. conferences and act like he's helping everybody, act like he's doing <laughs> everybody a favor. Again, it's just this gaslighting that just goes on and on. And the way he plays with everyone's emotions, right? Oh, I, I'm going to ease the restrictions. Uh, two weeks hence, oh, we had another cluster. We have another outbreak over here and pull it back. It's like a yo-yo, up and down, up and down. And, you know, the the, the, press, the depression, the, <clears throat> the suicide rate, everything is going through the roof because of this dictator Dan down there. Right, that's you know Drake. Chairman Dan. Dan. <laughs> Chairman Dan. There's there's a good meme going around. Uh, his his image was photoshopped to make him look Asian. <laughs> the, the name was Tan Andrews, you know. But yeah, it's 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 pretty communized because if they succeed in another one of their agendas, in embroiling America, Japan, Australia, now India, in another war, this time with China. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all well and good. They're over here fighting for freedom of navigation and you know, fighting to keep Taiwan free. Meanwhile, the Chinese do an end around, wind up in Melbourne, Australia, right? Yeah. Like they're already there and they already own the, so many of the ports. So they literally have their own airfield, their own air base in Western yeah. Australia, right? Yeah. And, you know, many people say, ah, these uh, protests have no effect. Oh, yes, they do. Because I could tell, especially 1st of August, um, the system was running amok when 1.3 million showed up. They, they weren't prepared for that. So, um, and especially now, a couple of months later, we had a good demonstration in uh, Dresden last weekend. Good turnout. <laughs> and there was um, a suspended policeman. He has been suspended since he talked on one of these uh, demonstrations. And uh, they gave a speech together with um, 
I, I don't know really who he is. I saw him for the first time. His name is Helios. Um, but so they were standing arm in arm and at the end of their speech, they were standing arm in arm and they were waving at the crowd. So now guess what? <laughs> the police detained them afterwards, took photos and so on and so forth because allegedly while they were waving they held their hand in a 40 degree angle and the police said that was a Hitler salute. Siege aisle. Uh, yeah yeah exactly. So oh, it, it was the Nuremberg rally that's what was really happening. Yeah so um that shows me how desperate they are, yeah? Uh, of course, it is outrageous. Of course, it is made up shit that <laughs> has not one thread of reality. But um, it is a wonderful example um, about how freaked out the system is. They, they need to latch on anything to put them into the neo-Nazi uh, corner and the right-wing extremist corner and what have you. And the police, the cult of order followers, once again, they are doing the bidding for their masters. Yeah. And they function the same all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> this cult, you know, they, they, they don't stop at anything. For their lousy paycheck, they are willing to enforce this di dictatorship. And then one day you go home and you tell your children, yeah, that you have to show your immunity passport and everything and that you cannot do anything before... Anybody knows everything that there is to know about you. And yes, we collected your DNA and we hooked you up to the AI. Daddy did that. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> I mean, hello. What yes, is going it, on? It, it, it's not just, although they're a big source of the problem is, is the military and the police and law enforcement. Mm -hmm. But these these brain dead social justice warriors, these communist ideologues. It's yes, of course. They yeah. they as well, but but the police and the yes. military, they are the ones enforcing they, it. They are the ones enforcing. Yeah. But but the point I was gonna make, and, and they're they're the bigger problem, but you know, the these idiot socialist uh communist, first of all, they think they're part of the club. They think that when all is said and done, if the communist or whoever did they think they're supporting really do take over they're not going to get a slice of the pie they never do once the communists completely take over the first thing they do is they line up the socialists and machine gun them and that's happened in country after country after country they don't, they don't need any more complainers at that point right yeah. their, their usefulness has come to an end but but the point i was making was it used to be a time when the young people would stand up to the old order they, they they'd look up and say no that's just a, uh, a dumb way of doing things it's tradition uh it, it's impinging on my freedom it's impinging on my family's freedom and <clears throat> impinging on my business right and now what they've done because of this indoctrination as you know which has been going on for generations now mm -hmm. these brain dead social justice warriors are the, are the biggest supporters of all this control all this a dictatorial draconian crap they're, they're all yeah, with, for with, that. with that type of education system i'm not really surprised <laughs> yeah so but that's about pretty much all you can expect from that and mm -hmm. i would like i would like there is a there is a sub demographic in america at least and to some degree in 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 the uk of ex-military people who can see through the BS. Mm. I think that there needs to be more of them. 
uh, because at, at some point, you know, you know, like you and I, we look at the military and law enforcement differently th than uh, a lot of these these um, order followers and a lot of these uh, TV watchers. These are these are the enforcers. These are the people that are going to kick the doors down. Mm -hmm. And at some point, these military people are going to have to just. Again, they were subjected to even more brainwashing than the social justice wards I was talking about. They've, I mean, they've been subjected to that and then the you know, military mind control on top of that. So it'll be even harder for many of them to break programming. But at some point, someone's going to have to wake up. Now, in in the wake of the, the invasion of Iraq and in, what was it, 2003 and the second invasion, <clears throat> and so many veterans came back maimed, traumatized, PTSD. Many of them went public uh, with their uh, misgivings and giving their thoughts about how illegal, blatantly illegal, the whole Iraq war was. And of course, by extension, the whole Af Afghanistan war. At some point, it's got to sink in that that was a lie that they fell for, that whole 9-11 crap, right? And now it's just a different kind of crap that they're, that they're falling for again. And if they get in, in a war with China or get in a war with Iran or Russia, that's just more of the same crap, right? At some point, you would think the coin would drop and they would wake up and say, you know, we're being played here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but... I'm not going to hold my breath uh, because one thing I know about the military is when they get to that level of uh, flag rank, uh, generals and admirals, it's they're all 100 percent. Just about all of them are 100 percent for this agenda. They're not going to promote someone to flag rank who is not a part of this. Uh, they will weed them out ruthlessly. There, there are probably some colonels just below colonels and captains just below flag rank that, that understand what's going on. But at the upper levels, they're all for this because many of them are Luciferians. Many of them are in these fraternal orders. We just have to wait and see. And you know what I think they are counting on? Your generation, my generation, the ones who have a slight idea what freedom might look like. Sooner or later, they will pass away. And the ones who are newly born into this totalitarian system, they don't know any better. So honestly, it's now or never. If we can't turn it around now, in the next coming month, it's done. It's over. I'm sorry to say that. Yes, you can say that the wish for freedom is deeply ingrained into the human being. And that's correct. On the other hand, it will pretty much depend how much technology they put into the vaccines and from what I am seeing, it's quite a lot. And if it is sending, it can also receive. Meaning, will we reach a point where we no longer can be sure if our thoughts are our thoughts? If we are literally remote controlled, meaning, at that point, will that deeply ingrained wish to be free, will that be terminated by the technology? I think there is a possibility for that. That flame, that inner flame of freedom has been extinguished in a lot of people already because of the fear that's mm -hmm. been instilled in them. The, the the fear of their own mortality they're going to die, die a horrible death well they're going to die if they wind up in a hospital and have a tube stuck down their throat they're, yeah they're going to cark it for sure <clears throat> but 
by being told over and over and over because they refuse to turn the TV off. And, and it, it, now it's become a false mul force multiplier because it's not just the TV people and the, mm. these evil news presenters. When I look at them, I think of that movie, They Live. I see these aliens there, you know, talking in, um, as news presenters. But it's, it's the echo chamber where yeah. even if one were to not watch the television or listen to the radio, it, just the chatter that they, you hear from all these people that are totally uh, brainwashed, basically. Uh, Australia is probably, again, they didn't have a large, we don't have a large population here to begin with, but as far as the ratio of people that are awake compared to those that are basically brainwashed, it's, it's infinitesimal. It's very, very small. Mm. It, it's, you know, the Australians had prided themselves for being independent and rugged and frontier-like, but that was before. That was, uh, they imported too much Americana, quite frankly, the worst kind of Americana, the, the, pop, the pop culture, right? The Illuminati Hollywood pop culture was, you know, imported wholesale here. So even you hear young people today they sound like Americans, the, you know, the slang they use and the terms they use, right? So mm. it's it's unfortunate, but I, I think that the point you made that if we don't turn things around, I, I would agree with that because, and I think that so-called, many so-called truthers haven't quite grasped this part yet. Mm. They don't understand the depths and the magnitude of the evil that they're that's arrayed against them, they don't realize the depths and the uh, the lengths they will go to. Nine eleven, nine eleven was a champagne cruise compared to what they have in store, right? I mean, they'd already done World War One, the war to end all wars. Twenty years later, they did World War Two. Hundreds yeah. of millions of people extinguished. They installed the Bolshevik regime. They installed Mao. These are I've mass, read the book mass. The Great Reset. What's that? I've read I've read that book by Klaus Schwab, The Great Reset. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> I just hope that there may be pockets of resistance here and there, but the the way the United Nations is set up and NATO and there's already so many foreign troops. And, and now in Australia, they publicly announced, the, the defense ministry here publicly announced that they're going to be bringing in foreign troops to help in some unspecified emergency in the future, right? Hmm. So they're already saying they're bringing in foreign troops and that many of them are probably already here. Certainly the Chinese have been here. We're just a big investment as far as they're concerned. So um, anyhow. Yeah, and in Canada yeah. as well. <clears throat> yeah. They, they allegedly they are protecting their, um, their properties in, uh, in Canada. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a smart, it's a smart business move, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you look at it from that perspective. Well, we've reached the end of an interesting first segment with uh, Judith Quoba, uh, who's become a very good friend of the Cosmic Switchboard show. And, and thank you for having me on your show as well, Judith. I've had wonderful discussions with you in the past. Uh, could you give our listeners and viewers uh, your information, how they can find you? Yeah, my uh, channel is Night Flight, uh, all in one word. Uh, it's on YouTube. I'm on uh, brand YouTube, BitChute, <laughs> in case we get uh, we will get shut down because they purged a lot, yeah, <laughs> recently. And um, yeah, I, I'm still small potatoes to them. So, but who knows? Maybe sooner or later they will wipe out medium and smaller channels as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to think of myself as still one of the small kind of slide under the radar guys and you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they, they got bigger they got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> Anyhow, um, this is James Bartley. If you like what we do, if you believe in what we do, please go to the cosmic switchboard.com, sign up and become a member and we'll see you at the top of the next segment. <laughs>